you, you, you mentioned automatic gate control, and that uh, brings up a question that's been on my mind for quite a while. A lot of fellows are using pulse width modulators, and they're using them to limit the current to the cell, which is a nice thing. But uh, at the same time, you see the cell out there, and the, 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 the engine is just idling on the Ford truck, and it's going bubble, 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 and frothing and foaming and getting hot. And you don't need to be making all that hydrogen gas uh, when the engine is idling. Uh, aren't we modulating the, uh, the pulse width modulator with the engine RPM so that we're delivering the right amount of bronze gas to the mixture, uh, or a consistent value at least, so that the, uh, the uh, ECM module isn't going to look at it while it's idling and say, boy, have we got problems. Oh, yes, there we go. You bring up a very good point, and actually, uh, I agree 100% with you. Um, systems should be varied based on engine demand, and I actually designed a controller that does that. I don't know how many of you were present at the, uh, the, the show and tell conference where I actually showed that controller. We can't actually sell that controller, though, for those that have PTI, they can't sell that controller because that controller is not UL listed or CE listed or rated. And we were told by the lawyers that we have to sell products in that system that are UL or CE rated. Now, as far as the, for you guys out there, you do what you want. But them as a company, they can't sell it. So what I did is I turned over that design to the hydrogen garage and they're gonna be selling that design. Um, and that will allow you to interface to either TPS, map, mass airflow sensor, or any other varying uh, voltage, up or down, varying up or down, upward going or low, uh, downward going, from between zero and five volts. It will help a lot with the ECM. And yes, it will. It will help a lot with trying to mitigate issues where you have too much gas at idle and not enough at speed. Yes? To your UL. Do UL thing. Uh, as far as I understood, though, anything low voltage doesn't need UL approval. Right. I'm not sure. Low volts doesn't not require sure UL that. approval. So that's why I, I wouldn't understand why somebody would tell you you couldn't sell it because no UL or CE. Yeah, I'm not sure. So low about voltage that. Doesn't, doesn't because it was the actually the trucking companies that came back with that and said that their insurance wouldn't allow it. if they have a, a system problem. Uh, caused by a fire or something on the truck that was caused by one of the system components and that it was not a UL list component, the insurance company could actually not pay. Huh. And that was the, that was, work, the lawyers worked that out. It had nothing to do with that. Um, believe me, I would rather have my controller out there doing this than some of the controllers that are on the market um, because my controller takes a lot of values in consideration. You're allowed to, you just set an idle point, set a wide open throttle point, and then let the controller do the rest. It just takes the, the varying signal and allows it to control the amount of output between those two extremes. It should be. It should be available for sale. I don't know how soon they're getting boards made. Oh, they're at the point of making boards. They have, yeah, they have to get the boards made. And uh, then they have to put them into housings and all that, so I don't know what the, the lead time is, uh, how long it's gonna take them to get them out on the market. Um, the controllers that we currently have available to us is the, uh, the uh, controllers that we use on, on that system that they buy. Those are custom made for them from a, a company that manufactures uh, these, these types of controllers. And they can be configured to do the same thing but uh, it's a little more difficult because you have to actually think it over and adapt it to each individual vehicle um, based on what type of sensor you have to work with. The one I designed, it's got a multitude of inputs and it's pre-configured to look for, when, when you turn off the manual control, you can manually dial it up and down. You turn that off when you're below 5% of its value, it goes out and looks at the external inputs. And if it sees, one of the external inputs as high going low or low going high, then it uses that input. It actually looks for an active input. So, so. this replaces the EFI? No, no. This is just, 
the controller that allows you to adjust the amount of gas output based on engine demand. Yes. And this uh, system that's on there, that's a current regulated type controller. Most of the, the PWMs you see, you just dial, dial the value, and as the cell warms up, it starts drawing more current again. You have to turn it down again. If the cell is cold, you have to turn it up. It doesn't regulate. So there's a lot of work went into doing that current regulation. Like I said, I, I broke ground with that with my controller. So I was able to adapt these other controllers to do the same thing via programming and by using the same types of sensors to, to detect that. Um, but essentially, it allows you to set it. Hey, I want 50 amps. Okay, it brings up 50 amps and it just, it, it, it's just like the O2 sensor where it seeks back and forth, rich lean, rich lean, to, to keep that target in mind. Well, it does the same thing. It's a lot more stable than just trying to hold a single value. I found that out through experience. So we seek each, each side of that target point. So it's constantly going. In fact, our window on that is two and a half amps, plus or minus. So if we want 50 amps, it's gonna go between 52 and a half and 47 and a half. It's just gonna back and forth between. The average is still 50 as it cycles back and forth between those two points. But yeah. Over the last year or so, are you seeing more penetration of interest in this absolute market? So, I mean, is this crowd bigger than? We, we had a bigger crowd at the, uh, at the show and tell. Much bigger crowd. But it was a different kind of crowd, okay? I mean, there wasn't so many people coming from across the country. Uh, there, was, there was a lot of locals. There wasn't a whole lot. There was some that came from, from across the country. But you know, I understand here there's a lot of people from actually all over the United States. It's not just a lot of Floridians. So. Where do you see the technology going in the next two or three years? Well, I see it actually moving towards, uh, if we do continue this, this grassroots effort, I see it moving towards uh, more public acceptance as they hear about from friends, neighbors, that have tried these systems, and, and getting the public to accept it, and getting past like to these naysayers, these guys that just want to say, can't work, violates the laws of thermodynamics. You know? Yes? You see our electric uh, plug-ins uh, kind of moving towards this, uh, shoving this market a little bit off to the side? Oh, uh, you mean plug-in hybrids? Uh, plug-in hybrids, or just plain plug-in electric cars there's still a bad pu uh, public perception about electric cars you know too short a range you know uh, batteries are expensive um, you know, the hybrids plug-in hybrids again same thing there's not that many of them around um, the automakers like to put this stuff out as, as pipe dreams to try to satisfy the public to accept what we're giving you now because this is what we're going to give you well you know, does it come about? It sure takes a long time to get them to accept any any little improvement. You know, um, now we're going to have to do it. The automakers aren't going to do it for us. I mean, if if you want to build an electric car that gives you a decent range, I mean that's what you got to do. You got to build it. You got to go out and buy you an, an old car, gut it out, put your own electric motor and controller and battery system in it, and you can beat just about anything the automakers make because you do it, because you're willing to do it. They aren't. <laughs>